Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and discuss chemical and physical properties and changes, learn so about some examples and also how to differentiate between them. Okay, so first of all, properties are traits that can be observed. So a chemical property is a trait that when we are observing it, changes the item. So for example, if we are observing that an item is flammable, that means that the item is on fire and therefore is changing. In contrast, physical properties are traits that we can observe that do not change the item. For example, I am noticing that the paper is smooth, it is white, it has black ink on it. All of those things I observed, but they didn't change the paper itself. So chemical properties, when I observe those traits, the item is undergoing a change. Physical properties, the item stays exactly the same. And then really closely related to that is chemical and physical changes. So changes involve altering the material in some way. There is an active process going on. So a chemical change is something that alters the sub-microscopic makeup of an item. So we are looking at the atomic level. We are rearranging how the atoms are connected, maybe adding bonds, adding atoms, breaking bonds, things like that. Physical changes, these are things that do not alter the submicroscopic makeup of an item. So we're not changing how atoms are bonded, we're changing the material in some other way. So an example of this could be tearing a piece of paper. The paper is still paper, whether it's one sheet or two half sheets, it's still the same thing. So that is a physical change. Okay, so I have some examples here. Um, and I want you to place them in the correct category. So chemical and physical properties and chemical and physical changes. So go ahead, pause the video for a few seconds, try and answer this on your own, and then we'll talk about it in a few seconds. Okay, so hopefully you got the answers correct. So for the chemical property that is flammability, because as I said, if we're seeing that something is flammable, it's able to catch on fire, that means it is undergoing a chemical change. So it's being changed um, in some way. The physical property, that would be something like the color, okay? So I have a red ball. When I see that I have that ball is red, it's still the same thing. I'm not altering in any way. Chemical changes, the example here, is a nail rusting. So as that nail rusts, we are going ahead and changing that atomic level makeup going from just plain old iron atoms to iron oxide. So we're having a chemical reaction going on. And then physical changes, the example here is tearing a piece of paper. Now, just to go into a little bit of detail with this, um, one thing that is a common mistake that I see is when it comes to phase changes. So if I'm melting something, evaporating, boiling, all of those are physical changes. Okay, so if I think about water. If I take water and I freeze it, I get ice. But if I melt that ice, I get water back. I am not changing what it is. It is still H2O. Similarly, if I evaporate the water or boil the water and condense it into steam, it is still water, H2O. Nothing is changing there. So those are all physical changes. Okay, so phase changes are physical changes. Dissolving is also a physical change. So if I have lemonade and I'm adding sugar to my lemonade, well, if I let the water evaporate off, I still have sugar at the bottom and lemon juice. That's still the same. So dissolving and phase changes are just physical changes. They are not chemical, so make sure you keep that straight. Okay, something else I want to talk about is the idea of extensive versus intensive properties. So extensive properties depend upon the amount or the extent of matter that is present. So these are things like volume, mass, and energy. Intensive properties are things that do not depend upon the amount of matter that we have present. So whether or not a material can conduct electricity or heat, its melting or boiling point and its density are some examples of intensive properties. If I have a lot or a little bit of it, all those things stay the same. It's intensive, it is what is in the material all the time. Extensive depend upon the amount that we have. 
Okay, so I hope that this clears things up. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone, and thanks for watching. Bye.